Evening, this is Stormcastle. In today's book, I want to do one of my storytelling videos instead of uh, the short. I've been doing a lot of shorts recently. I, you know, I tried doing my shorts and I've been reading a bunch of uh, horror books, but I want to talk about you know, why certain books are important to me. I did one on Avengers uh, 98 and I did one on uh, Peter Parker number 85 and uh, Christ in the Barrens number 4 and another book that is fairly important to me is this one here Avengers number 112 uh, this came out December 4th 1973 it's called Houses Divided Do Not Stand John Romita Sr. is a cover artist and I recently did a video, a short, on uh, Avengers 120, showing off the cover, which is a great cover, great story. And I honestly never read that. I didn't read that book until maybe 20 years after I read this book. This, it, not this particular book, but this issue, was one of the books that was given to me when I got my bag of Avengers. The first, first, the lowest number book was number 98, then uh, number 115, which is the issue just before Defenders, Defenders War, and I was a bit of confused, confusion from number 98 to 115, because I had no idea who Mantis or um, Swordsman was, honestly. And then, it had set up that, and then... I had issue 121 and I saw it and I'm like, oh my God, this is an amazing cover, you know. Uh, I knew at this point I already liked the vision as a character, the Scarlet Witch. I knew um, Iron Man and Thor and uh, Black Panther, you know, I know those two from the older cartoons and, you know, he'd seen pictures of Black Panther, so I characters I knew existed so but this helped me cement my love more for the vision and for the Scarlet Witch from for Wanda and Viz and also I like okay I really enjoy Zodiac and I prefer over the time I really enjoyed the Zodiac stuff probably because I was young and this is you know I saw amongst my first readings my first Avengers books has Zodiac uh, three issues in for the books. So I said it was number 98, 115, 121. I didn't have 122, but then I had 123 and it went onward, which goes in the Celestial Madonna storyline. And I like Steve Englehart's writing. And this is probably where it comes from. So I open the first page and it says, Houses Divided Cannot Stand. It's uh, Steve Englehart, author, John Buscema, guest artist, Don Heck, and embellishment. He was, did uh, some um, pencils and some inking. John Costanza, letterer, and B. Colder's colorist, and Roy Thomas is listed as the editor. But I like how it is. It says Steve Englehart as author. So it says, starts off here, it says, Ye old synopsis. The international crime cartel called Zodiac led by the rampaging Taurus, has landed its combination starship slash star weapon atop of Manhattan's tallest building in order to kill all people born under the sign of Gemini. The Avengers arrived in, in time to cripple the stellar powered craft, but now it goes right into this. And I'm like, whoa, this is... You know, because... You know, there was Loki and Dormammu, and I'm like, what? But... I've got to say, this is, this book was so more enjoyable. This is where I really began to enjoy the Avenger stuff. And we start with Damsel in Distress. Like I said, I didn't read the book before it, after it, probably till like 20 years later, until the 2000s. I read this book in like 1983, originally. So it would be 10 years after it was published. And it was 
really great set of stories. I, uh, you know, I didn't know who these Zodiac guys were, but we, you know, we get this. And this art isn't as good as the one number 98, but I can see there, I mean, you know, there's the vision. I love the way he looked. And I really wasn't sure what Scarlet Witch's powers were. And what vision is, and he really does look like he's the chairman. You know, he's telling them not to vary. And basically, he's he's working together and um, keep talking, boom. You know, so he breaks the line of sight with Scarlet Witch and she uses her powers. And she destroys the, you know, she destroys the Star Slayer. And basically, it all kind of comes down to, and just the, the, the penciling, the, I mean, this is, you can look at it, you can just feel the power of the action. And John Bushama did a great art for the great side of pencils for it. Um, and I was you know, trying to figure out all these things. We, and you get to see how powerful is these guys all jump Iron Man. And then Vision just like takes out three of them. And Wanda, you know, gets taken out by the by the weapon. She's getting, you know, she's powering up. Sorry. But it's just good art. You see the Avengers, the Avengers are working together. And... Uh, you know, Thor takes out. Uh, Cap Mar I'm sorry, Cap America shows up at this point, and uh, his shield knocks a bunch of them down. And it's like they're like that shield. It can't be. And then just, then just call me call me a red, white, and blue figment of your imagination, Vision, Captain America. I loved how they used to do this in the '70s. Namor versus the men called Force in Submariner '69. I liked those. I miss those. And he says, What dost bring out here, Avenger? We were informed that the police do seek thee for the murder of a man called Tumbler. And he says, as he's Cap's own book. That's only too, too true, Thor, but it's a frame-up. But it's nice that they have these little bits. And Honestly, I missed... You know, I miss them having more of these kind of connected interfeeling. I... You know, a lot of the books these days don't seem to have that kind of... Look at Ares, he throws Informatus off. And uh, she jumps off. She wakes up and the vision just comes down there. And what they forget in modern comics and in the MCU is the vision, in his, when he's flying, he really can't pick somebody else up. Um, Bendis gave the vision... Flying, I think Bendis was doing did Avengers vs X Men, and basically Vision fly. I've heard you an issue where Vision just, at the beginning of the series, Vision tells Wanda not to come back, and he does nothing for her. Then he spends time in Avengers vs X Men, uh, flying an injured Scarlet Witch around. But so Vision grabs her, and he turns Diamond Hard, and just this art. You know, and he comes down inside the building. And it's just these amazing action lines. This, and, you know, he saves Mantis, Doctor Strange, fights Save the World, Marvel premiere now on sale. And he comes down and, and they hit hard. And the Avengers are like, oh, the whole side's coming down. And they act together as a team to save the building. Which gives uh, Zodiac a chance to run away, which you know they need to. And we get to see the team working together to save everyone in the building. And it's just nice to see these little moments, to see them working as a team. You know, Thor is using all the strength to hold the building up. I always kind of wondered about like how comfortable him fitting the hammer inside his belt would be. I mean. I would imagine that would like dig inside his ribs. I, I, that was always the weird, one of the weird things to me. Bram Stoker's original novel, Terracom's Life and Dracula, is number four. Over here it says the Falcon flies, Moonstone strikes, all in Cap America 171. Sorry. 
And uh, says, how's Mantis, Wanda? She seems only shaken, Cap. It's amazing. No, it's fate. But uh, that is a be that being such as incredible skills, mine should be able to help. This one only is slight worry. Now I feel feel slight injuries from my internal organs from the shock of a crash. This one will have to rest now and recover. Steve Englehart really didn't have like complete full ideas of what she could do, but he really liked the, her being the, the mystery woman. And uh, when he's from an article when I saw, I saw as he said he enjoyed the Guardians of the Galaxy movies and he liked seeing the character Mantis but that's not his Mantis and I can understand he's he's very protective about her I mean he did bring her through three other comic book companies but so anyways and we and then Cat America runs off to his stuff and it just kind of felt these little moments and honestly you know, thought bubbles. Maybe I should have asked them for help. But they have their own problem with Zodiac. Still a man, could have no finer friends than these. I miss thought bubbles. Uh, my oldest talks about how we don't have thought bubbles anymore. And honestly, I, I thought back, I'm like, yeah, I think that's more of a, I think that's a Jeff Loeb. I think he really kind of hates. And after Hush, they started disappearing. Bendis, I mean, because Bendis used to use them, but his, or some choices but um we come here in in, in uh when i find out that um the swordsman's injured but it was all i had no idea you know because i had missed all of, i missed the defenders defenders war seeing where man where swordsman was injured and steve Englehart did the avengers and defender side which was nice but It was great that uh, uh, the more and more I read the book, even even now I look back at it and uh, it just kind of takes me back forty years, forty one years. We start seeing the beginning, of the origin of where where Mantis comes from, and, and we Donald Blake comes in and. Um, I can't remember when Iron Man found out that Thor was, uh, uh, when, when Thor, Donald Blake was, when Thor, when Donald Blake was Thor, but I do remember when Thor and Steve Rogers found out that Tony Stark was Iron Man. That was when they fought the Molecule Man. And I know that back in the original time, the, which a lot of people forget is the Avengers didn't require them to know each other's secret identity. And for years, you know, most of them didn't know who each other was. You know, they didn't know Tony Stark was the man behind until, the, like, to, uh, honestly, we, uh, when, uh, Jim Rhodes took over for Tony Stark. We get, like, a lot more of the background of where we get a beginning of the background where Mantis shows up. And basically, you know, it's, it was nice to get the feel, the feel of who these characters are and everything. I said I, I had no idea, and, and honestly, uh, for me, for anybody, for anybody was, you know, for me, there was brand new characters. But I, you know, uh, I almost kind of felt the same way with people when they first read these books. You know, got Mantis's origin. You know, I didn't realize. I knew that the Avengers team would change. Fire versus ice, the son of Satan versus the ear ice demons today. Uh, I knew, you know, I knew the Avengers team would change because, uh, you know, I picked, I started picking up the Avengers, or Spider Man wanted to join the team, and there was the new Cap Marvel was on the team, and Star Fox was there, and, but. I had no idea of what was coming in the Celestial Madonna series. This one has a value stamp. A couple of those original Avenger books I had had the value stamp clipped out. But Doctor Doom is number 84. And we get to see, uh, you know, the 
So, uh, says, indeed, thou hast strong... Let me go here. It goes, in a moment, Iron Man, that has quite a woman swordsman, even in her pain, in her control of mind and body, approach perfection. Yes, Vision, I know. I'm aware that you do. Goodbye. What did he mean by that? That Could he... No. And this is what sets up all kinds of trouble later on because the swordsman is besides being a former reformed criminal he was very much feeling inferior to all the rest of the Avengers because he's just got a fancy sword and he's wounded and the Avengers are, you know their real vision is extremely powerful and Mantis in later issues does openly kind of flirt we see more of the Zodiac and we get to, you know, they're, they're talking. And we don't have no idea who these people are. And the Zodiac had showed up uh, in, like, Avengers 78, 80, 79. There was a whole bunch of stuff, uh, probably 40 issues earlier, they dealt, dealt a lot with Zodiac. Nick Fury's brother was, uh, honestly, was, 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 was Scorpio, the Scorpio King. And I had no idea who these characters are. And I've loved all this. And uh, here they go. Uh, Throwing the bull is always a pleasure, Taurus. Real cute, Ares. But I'll mess you up for it. And it's never really explained if they are super-powered or how they got their powers. But, uh, you know, Taurus, they slam into each other. And Taurus knocks Ares out. And, uh, you know, there's a lot more of the astrology. We see Libra. And then uh, Ares decides to backstab Taurus by calling up uh, Van Lunt, who we've seen. It says, you know, it's, uh, of course, it's Van Lunt speaking. And from, from 77, 81, it revealed in 82 that he was, that, uh, Funding the Zodiac. And in Daredevil Season 1 Netflix, they actually meant, uh, there was actually reference to Van Lunt in his uh, crackpot astrologer friends. There's, I said the art was so great, and, you know, I you know, got a lot of other box text. But these books were so amazing. And the more and more I got involved into them, I just fell in love more with the Avengers and I had to read more. I go on. Boom, there's another Marvel value. There's another Marvel value stamp. There's a checklist. And the old Marvel. And then of course, the Avengers break in the warehouse to get to get Zodiac. And Van Lunt jumps out. And then of course, um, Go to knock the vision out, and he's super hard at this point. Hard, diamond hard for him. And uh, Wanda uses her powers and brings him down. And then says, The windows of the steel plates are slamming shut. All the windows, what's, what's going on? I don't know. Tell the truth, the unarmed truth avengers. Oh, it's blood. Who speaks? Who else, Thunder God? Who else but the man who lured the Rebellious houses of the Zodiac to the seemingly mundane structure. And who has captured, now captured, his other enemies as well. Van Lund, broadcasting from outside? What's the point? You can't hold the Avengers in a warehouse, even a steel blade one. You won't hold this either, you double agent. How much did Taurus offer you? Offer you for this? You, you still don't understand, do you? You think I'm only the money man. You think I'm uh, that because I don't wear a costume, I'm, I'm merely a backup player. Then you should know that I do that I do sometimes wear a costume, one you know too well. Oh my lord! Yes, Dudley Fools, the the aging financier you thought would bankroll your puerile revolt is Tauros. And neither you nor the Avengers shall profit from this revelation. You see, this warehouse I so cleverly imprisoned you. It's not what it seemed. Look, he's pushing a button. The entire building is vibrating. Oh, is holy! This is a rocket ship. The deadly space trap. 
and that is as far as I got. For 20 years, you know, I, I've had Avengers 123, so I did know in the end what did happen because I saw the later stuff. But even looking back, uh, even though I've read this book plenty of times, you know, this copy that I own now and the earlier copies I had before, it kind of brings me back to that point of my first turns and enjoying the Avengers books. You know, it was a third of the bag of books that I had, and it was just as good. More and more, I, I delve, dove into. I love the Celestial Madonna storyline. I love, love the where this leads to. And I have the graphic, I have the graphic novel trade for it. I have a lot of the issues. And it feels to me like it's a great story still. But some of it is, I wonder how much it is because it really was such a great story and how much of it is uh, more of like a nostalgia for that this moment where I where I sat and over the course of a few days read this stack of Avengers from so I had 123 to uh, Avengers 133 and then 134 uh, Avengers 134 I had all those books unfortunately the giant size Avengers books weren't inside giant size Avengers 2, 3, and 4 which were part of the, the, the Celestial Madonna storyline they were inside the bag so I did a lot of the, what they had by catch up and I picked them up years later I, you know, I picked, of course picked up giant size Avengers number 4 first because By the time I had finished this run of Avengers books, Vision and Scarlet Witch were my favorite Avengers. Vision was my favorite character. Wanda was his partner, and I loved those. After the Celestial Madonna storyline, I had a few other books in the 140s, where I first Hellcat and Squadron Supreme... And I enjoyed those. And I'll show off those and talk about them some other time. But for me, this is always going to be one of those books that I can pick up. And honestly, I probably should see if I can buy myself a much better copy. But this is the, at least the copy that I can sit and read and just look at individual issues and really enjoy that time where I would like get the part of the story and my imagination filled in all the rest anyways I'm sorry that probably sounds you know yeah it's a good that's a good book uh, anyways if you enjoyed this video I you know appreciate you give me a like thumbs up a comment if you have any thoughts about this if I, if I rambled on too long if you enjoyed it I've got some more readings I'm going to actually do, but I just wanted to show this off. I didn't, you know, didn't want to read the story, you know, the voices. I just wanted to show bits and highlights and talk about what is important for me. And honestly, if you could share, if you haven't, if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. But you share the video with others, let them see, you know, maybe get a conversation about these old Avenger books. You know, why this old Bronze Age Avengers are so important, are so enjoyable for me. And why they're so enjoyable for you. I would love to hear those thoughts. Anyways, this is Storm Castle, and sorry I have rambled on for 25 minutes, or almost 25 minutes. Uh, thank you, and have a good night. Bye.